Hey guys, so in this video we're going to talk about putting quadratics into this form here by completing the square. So if you've been watching some of my other videos or other videos just about this form, so you should know this is a really nice form for graphing, but not all quadratics fall into that form. So without further ado, I just want to jump right into it and start with this review exercise. So this is something you should feel comfortable with doing before you start this video. If you're not, I have some videos on how to do this in great detail that I'd highly recommend that you watch before attempting this video. Otherwise, hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, so in this case, so I wanna move one to the right and three up for my vertex. And then I'm gonna go out one and up two in each direction because two is that, that stretch factor that I've talked about in other videos. Okay, so here's my parabola should be good to go on that. And we know that when a parabola is in this form, this is nice and simple to graph. It's nice and straightforward, right? And the issue is that um, if I have a parabola, say like in this form, this is not as simple to graph. So what we'd like to be able to do is actually put something like this into this type of form. So that's the whole point of this, this exercise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna write out detailed steps that have to do with this example, and then we'll do a bunch more examples in this video. So first things first, so the leading coefficient needs to be one. If not, you need to divide everything by one. Okay, so this is gonna look a little bit odd in some ways because we're gonna do something to f of x, but let me write out the equation one more time just to show you what this step looks like. And so like I said, I wanna divide everything by the, the number. So the, the, basically I need a one in front of this x squared. I don't have it. So I'm gonna divide everything by two. So I'm gonna divide every single part by two like this. And so now you'll see what I'm left with. Um, so let's see, let's just write that out. So now I'm left with f of x over two. This is gonna equal x squared minus four x plus one. Okay, so now we can move on to the next step. So the next step is that you wanna isolate, maybe it's better to have this in here. The next step is to have, to isolate the X terms. So I'll write that down. So in this case, this is where I was left off. And so this X squared and this four X I want by themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead, actually I'll do this in the pink color just so you can track what I'm doing. So uh, I'll subtract one from each side. So I get f of x divided by two minus one equals x squared minus four x. Now, there's a lot of different ways actually that people describe how to do this. And I try to do the way that feels the most like completing this square. Um, if you watch other videos or if you look in other books, there you might see a slightly different way. And if you prefer a different way to do this, I mean, that's totally fine, but I'm just showing you the way that is most consistent with the same explanation I give for completing the square. Okay, so now that we have this, so notice that on this side, I can complete the square on this, and so that's what I wanna do. So let me clear some space, and then we'll start completing the square. So I'll write this down. Okay. So now I wanna complete the square on each side, so let me bring back my equation. So this is what I had, and so now I just wanna note here. So my b in this case is negative four, therefore my half b is negative two, and therefore my half b squared is four. Now, if you have no idea what I'm doing and you need a refresher on completing the square, I will drop a link to that video in the description of this video. So this is my half b squared, so I wanna add this to both sides. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So let's see, I've got f of x over two minus one, and now I wanna add that four to this side, and then I'm gonna do it again to this side. So I've completed the square. So now I wanna collect my like terms and factor. So this is gonna be f of x over two plus three. Actually, why don't we just leave it at that? And I'll, I'll just kind of talk about what to do in the next step. So let me clear some space again. 
So once you've completed the square, then you want to go ahead and factor the side that you completed the square on. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so my equation is this. And so if I want to factor this now as a, just a perfect square, so now this is going to become f of x over 2 plus 3 equals x minus 2 squared. Now here's where a little, this is a little bit different. So remember, we are not trying to solve this. We are trying to put this into this form. So if you were completing the square and you were trying to solve a quadratic, then you'd probably take the square root of each side and, and plow through this. But that's not the goal here. The goal here is to put this function into this form. So now what I have to do, I, I really have this as far as I can go. I actually have to now solve for f of x again. So let me clear some space and then we'll do that. So I know at first it seems really strange to do all of this to f of x, but I actually like this because for, for me, I am, sometimes I go into what I call computer mode and I might just start like trying to take the square root property of this or something just because I'm, I'm just kind of plowing through. But this side looks weird. So it's almost like this side is a placeholder and then eventually I, I clear it back up and, and make it look proper. So this is kind of a weird way to, to go about this problem, but I like thinking of this as a placeholder. So if I try solving for f of x, so first I would have to subtract off the three. And so then I get f of x divided by two equals x minus two squared minus three. And then to finish getting f of x by itself, I need to multiply by two. So if I multiply this side by 2, now be careful when you do this. You have to multiply everything by 2. One really common mistake I see with this is people forget to multiply this last one. Now when I do this, my 2's cancel out. So then I'm left with f of x equals 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 6. And hey, look at that. Now I have this in my desired form. I could pretty easily graph this. I can do all kinds of things to this so I've met the goal. Okay, so the, that was a really robust set of directions, kind of just outlining everything for you. So if you if you need to go back and review anything or write anything down, I'd highly encourage you to do that. And hey, if you're finding this content helpful, maybe consider liking my video or subscribing to my channel or leaving me a comment. I'm trying to grow uh, a free math channel for all, so your support is going to really, really help me out right now. Okay, so now let's do one together. So I'm, I'm going to now walk through an example with you. So notice in this one, um, I don't have a 2 here or a 3 that they have the correct leading coefficient, as we would say. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of walk you through this simplified case before I turn you loose. So the first thing that you need to do is isolate the x terms. So first things first, we need to add 2 to each side. Okay, so now I've got f of x plus 2 equals x squared plus 4x. So now what I want you to do is I want you to complete the square on this side and kind of see how far you can get. Um, hit play when you want to see some progress. Okay, so in this case, so I have my a is 1. Oops, sorry, what am I doing? <laughs> Completing the square. I've been filming too many videos lately. Okay, so my b is 4, my half b is 2, and then my half b squared is 4. So I need to add this 4 to each side. So I'm going to have f of x plus 2, and then I'm going to add 4 to this side. And then this side is going to be x squared plus 4x, also plus 4. Okay, so now on this side I want to collect my like terms, and then on this side I want to factor. So pause if you need to do that. So I've got f of x plus 6, and this will equal x plus 2 squared. Now to finish this, all I have to do is solve for x, which in this case is nice and straightforward, because all I have to do is subtract off the 6. So in this case, my final answer is going to be x plus 2 squared minus 6. And as you can see, so this is a, a lot shorter steps when I'm not writing down everything, so I just wanted to kind of walk through that process with you. Okay, so now I have three examples here just to kind of let you try this on your own. So I'd highly recommend pausing the video and trying these and then hit play when you're ready to see the solutions. So starting with um, b here, so first I need to isolate the x terms. 
So I need to subtract off the 10. So I've got g of x minus 10 equals x squared plus 6x. And now I can complete the square. So my b in this case is 6. My half b will be 3. And my half b squared will be 9. Half b squared. Okay, so now I need to add 9 to each side. So now I'm going to have g of x minus 10 plus 9 equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. So now I can collect my like terms. So on this side I'll have g of x minus 1, and then on this side to factor, so this will factor as x plus 3 squared. So I have x plus 3 squared. So now to get this into that f of that, that desired form. I wish there was a name for that form, but there is not. Like, I I feel like we should name the form. Maybe we should name the form after me. What do you think? <laughs> um, okay, so let's, so to get this into that desired form, sorry, I'm being goofy. Um, now I just have to add one to each side. And so here's my final answer. Okay, great. So now let's work on somewhere we actually have to divide stuff out. So, uh, yeah, moving on to this one. So here, just notice I do not have a leading coefficient of 1, so I have to divide everything by negative 1 to get this party started. You've got to do that or it's going to throw everything else off. So first I'm just going to divide everything by negative 1. So I'm just going to leave this placeholder as a negative 1. And I, again, I know it looks goofy, but I can come back later and kind of mess with it and it'll be fine. So here's what I've got. And now I need to isolate the x's, so I can subtract the 4 from each side. And so now I've got h of x over negative 1 minus 4 equals x squared minus 2x. Okay, so now I can complete the square. So my b is negative 2, my half b is negative 1, and my half b squared is positive 1. So now I need to add positive 1 to each side. So this will be h of x over negative 1 minus 4 plus 1 equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now I can collect my like terms. So on this side, this will become, I haven't really done anything, this h of x over negative 1 minus 3. And then this side I can factor it as x minus 1 squared. Okay, so now I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to clear off um, where I was completing the square just so I can kind of keep moving forward with this. So now what I want to do here is um, I want to solve for h of x. So to do that, first I need to add 3, so I think I can just barely fit that in here. So now I get h of x over negative 1 equals x minus 1 squared plus 3. And now I just have to divide or multiply everything by negative 1. And remember, you're multiplying everything by negative 1. So don't forget the last number here. That tends to be the tricky part. So my equation in this case is going to be h of x equals negative x minus 1 squared, all of this minus 3. OK. So now here for d, so now instead of having f of x, I have y. They're interchangeable. It's totally fine. So what I want to do first is, uh, so I don't have that leading coefficient that I want, so I need to divide everything by 3. So I guess I'll start there. Um, let's see, I'll just divide. I'll use the pink color again. Divide everything by 3. So I've got y over 3 now will equal x squared plus 2x minus 4. Okay, so now I need to isolate my x's. So I'll go ahead and add a 4 to each side. So now I've got y over 3 plus 4 equals x squared plus 2x. And now I can complete the square. So my b is 2, therefore my half b is 1, therefore my half b squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 to each side. So I get y over 3 plus 4 plus 1 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, while I'm on this side, I'm going to collect my like terms. So this will be y over 3 plus 5 equals x plus 1 squared. And now I'm almost there, so now I've got to start solving for the y. 
So to start, I'll subtract off the 5x. And once again, I'm just going to erase all of this so that I have some more room. And so now I've got y over 3 equals x plus 1 squared minus 5. And now I'm just going to multiply everything, everything, everything by 3. Now, if you find that you are not multiplying everything, one really good way to force yourself to think through that is to ask yourself before you do this, how many times are you supposed to multiply? Sometimes when we fall into that computer mode and we're just like not thinking through the details, what you have to do is you have to slow your brain down so that you can you can actually like catch those errors. It's, it's like actually a really key thing that math can help you figure out is how to slow your brain down so you can kind of more carefully think through errors. And it is a skill. It is a, It takes a lot of practice. Okay, so there's my final equation. Okay, so I have from here just a few more examples if you would like to see them. Although this video is already getting kind of long, so I think I, I will actually stop it here. And I'll drop a link in the comments to three more just examples if you want to see even more. So otherwise, um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.